Hello everyone, it is February 28th, 2023. It's Tuesday. It's Harp Tuesday. Welcome to this week's episode. So I'm here in New Zealand and today what I thought I would do is just a short episode on a, a very fundamental thing that I was reminded of uh, at, a, at a recent lesson. And I don't know that I've ever done a video specifically on this. I think I've talked about it in other ones, but, but I wanted to do an episode just devoted to this idea of being able to place four fingers in a row and play any finger. So as soon as you start playing with four fingers, so not right maybe at the very beginning, but as soon as you start playing with all four fingers, it's a really uh, sort of fundamental skill to be able to play the thumb or play two or play three or play four while the other fingers are placed. And in particular, when they're in a row like this, there's a slightly added complication potentially of the knuckles. So it's also good to be able to do this, where a bit of a bigger stretch. But what I want to talk about here is just this idea of placing four in a row. So I don't know, I'm in C, I'm starting on C. Uh, it could be any four strings in a row and playing the individual fingers. So I want to start by talking about the thumb. And at the end of this video, I'm going to put some slow motion footage of all four fingers. So you might find that interesting as well. But here with this thumb, one thing to keep in mind is that even though the thumb is closing on the finger, we're not trying to twist away, right? We, if we go here, we have to work to get the thumb back. We're just letting the thumb close on the finger, get a nice sound, get quite a bit of flesh on the string, right? A nice grip. And these fingers as well. So one of the things you want to think about when you're doing this is to make sure that even if we're work playing the thumb, that the rest of the fingers are in a position where they could play. So they're not sort of like this and then have to adjust when they actually go to play. You want them to be exactly where they're going to be when you play them. So we're not sort of turning the hand motion depending on which finger we're playing or, or adjusting the fingers depending on which finger we're playing. We're finding the same position no matter what finger or thumb we play. So with this thumb, I like to involve this top joint a little bit. I don't always use that. Sometimes I, I do more of this, but with this position and, and uh, like a big full articulation, I'm closing that top joint as well. So I think the thumb, of course, can be a bit tricky, but it, playing it with these fingers placed, I think is not too bad. If you're, if you're comfortable with a thumb, having the fingers on shouldn't be too bad, but a good chance to work the thumb a little bit. And then two. And here to think about pulling the string towards you. So we're not necessarily really pushing down. We're not plucking up like this. We're pulling the string almost like a bow and arrow, right? It gets pulled towards us and then gets released. And again, quite a bit of flesh on the string. And a nice follow through, but it, we're, not, we're not trying to push really hard into the palm or the base of the thumb in this case. It's just that's the, the sort of the follow through that the motion of playing the finger takes. Playing two might be the easiest of all these with all the fingers on the string, but there is a bit of sort of finger independence of being able to play this while the thumb is not playing. Then we get to three. And here we run into, I think, two, two potential issues. One is just that finger independence of isolating the motion of playing three while two and four are not playing. You can even kind of grab them on the string and then that might help you play that third finger. Again, grab a fair amount of flesh on the strings, even with the fingers that aren't playing and certainly with a third finger. And again, we're kind of pulling that like a bow and arrow and the third finger will close. If it's not comfortable for your hand for the third finger to go all the way down and or all the way in and touch the, the palm, don't force it. Again, the close is a follow through and not the goal. The goal is playing the string. So the independence is one challenge. The other challenge is that depending on the size of our fingers and the shape of our fingers, we may find that the back of the knuckle of two is interfering. Maybe we're getting, getting an une, unexpected harmonic. So you have to potentially straighten that last joint of two and pull the hand a little bit towards you. So if we're like this, then it's impossible to play. If we just adjust a little bit this direction, then we can do that without interference. So when I start to play, 
right here, the back of two might even be touching the D in this case. But as I go to play, that hand pulls towards me just a little bit, and that's all that's needed to let this string vibrate freely. And then as I finish playing, I'm, I'm, I'm still have some tension on the second finger, some act activation to keep it out of the way. So the third finger might be the hardest just because of that finger independence. And then we get to the fourth finger. This, in terms of finger independence, I think is easier potentially even than two, certainly than three, because it's the final finger. You know, it's we can play just the bottom of the hand. Pinky will open and close with it, of course. Make sure you get lots of flesh on the string. Again, not, not just kind of like this, but a good grip. And that helps let us pull this string a little bit out of alignment. And again, we have this same issue, maybe even more so than the third finger of the knuckle. In this case, the knuckle of three, potentially interfering with playing four. So again, try and straighten this knuckle a little bit. Try and pull the hand towards you a little bit as you go to play. We're doing a nice pull of the string like a bow and arrow, and the finger moves, follows through right into the palm of the hand. So that's, I mean, that, that's it, right? It's, it's, not a, it's not a big involved thing, but if you try that and find that it's not comfortable, it's something worth doing every day until it, all of those fingers become comfortable because it's such a fundamental ability, this, this ability to play any finger in this position. And it leads into things like some of the more involved finger independence, but even if you don't get to that, just being able to play any finger with those four in a row on the string is just, as I say, such a fundamental thing on the harp. In terms of practicing it, uh, my suggestion would be to just maybe, you know, again, every day, great little starting warm-up routine, play the thumb four times, two, three, four. Nice articulation, nice sound, good volume. Not, uh, speed is not the point here. We want good sound, good feel, and good volume. Two, one, two, That's it. And I think uh, before long, that's, that's going to feel comfortable. I think that's just going to help if it's not already comfortable. Getting that to feel comfortable is going to help with anything you do on the harp. So I hope you enjoyed that. I am here, by the way, in New Zealand. And in fact, <laughs> while it is Tuesday in North America, here in New Zealand, it's actually Wednesday. Uh, so yeah, um, I have another week left of my New Zealand tour. And then I fly to Australia and then Japan for quick visits in both of those countries, just to get a chance to be a little bit of a tourist. And then back home to Canada. So I know I've been behind a little bit in terms of Harp Tuesday episodes, but uh, especially when I get home, I'll try to do a couple in a row, you know, two weeks or three weeks in a row. So we'll get more Harp Tuesday episodes coming soon. And of course, uh, hopefully some Harpists in the Wild filmed here in New Zealand and, and potentially uh, Australia and Japan is the goal. So I will see you soon. In the meantime, hope you enjoyed this. Hope you found this useful and see you in uh, hopefully two weeks time. Cheers.